What's going on everyone? ODC, that's me here, and I'm back with another action figure review. This is actually my final review for Cobra Month, and uh, it, I figured, uh, why not go for one more FSS exclusive that I've actually had for quite a while, I just never got a chance to opening it. So I figured, let's open it together and go through the review together. This is the G.I. Joe exclusive, FFS, FSS exclusive, <laughs> Skullbuster Range Viper. Um, this was from Wave 2 of the FSS Club. And, um, yeah, this was actually a figure I got, a, I want to say, a couple, a few years ago. And uh, got it for really dirt cheap. I got it for around 25 bucks, I think. Uh, which I think is actually less than what the FSS Club charges. I think they charge around 20 to $30, or something like that. I don't know. If, I've never been a part of it, so I, I'm just guessing here. But I think I pretty much got it either around the same price as the uh, members would, would pay for or maybe a little bit less. But anyway, I um, ended up getting this at a Buffalo Comic-Con, I believe. So somebody had it there and uh, picked it up. Pretty happy about the purchase. Anyways, let's. Uh, I digress from that uh, meaningless bit of information trivia about myself. Uh, let's get to the uh, the card here. Looks pretty good. Now this is the Range Viper Commander, codenamed Skullbuster. He is uh, seen as the elite of all of the Range Vipers. He is also seen as a very <laughs> demonic slash. I don't know, I guess there's been questions called to his character, uh, uh, people starting to think that he was a cannibal at one point. Uh, if you read the back of his card right here, which I'm going to show you in a second, it actually says that there's rumors that he's got uh, bones in his locker, and with uh, not only are there bones in his locker, but the bones in his locker have teeth marks on them. So um, those are the rumors surrounding around this guy. Uh, and he's always anxious to get into a fight against a Joe. Anyway, here he is on the front of the card. I really like the front uh, artwork for the Range Viper. It looks really good. Flipping it around to the back, you have uh, more card artwork, which I really do like. Um, looks beautiful for the character. The paint applications are a little bit different here. As you can see, the Range Viper is more of a blue blue silver and then he's got gray for his underneath we're on the flipping around to the front card artwork here he has uh purple brown gray and a white face with reddish eyes and black inner lining for the eyes but um so a little bit of difference there between the two uh but anyway flipping it around to the back here is the file card and you can pause that and read it. Let me try and get the glare off. There we go. Pause that and read it. I'm trying to get it to focus properly so you guys can read it perfectly. But hold on, let me get it a little closer. No. There we are. Perfect. So you can pause that and read it if you so choose. Pretty interesting little read up for Skullbuster. Um, it's nice that we did end up getting a commander for our Range Vipers, even though us modern collectors didn't get a whole lot of chances to get a single carded Range Viper. This was really our only chance to get a Range Viper and it ended up being Skullbuster. So the only other way you could get one was getting it in the uh, Rise of Cobra line, which came with the twin battle gun. But then you had to buy the twin battle gun to get the figure. You couldn't get the figure separate, which I just I despise that. Well, they, he should have been a single carded release, especially him being an army builder. It, I mean, if you got him initially when he came out in retail, you would have had all these twin battle guns. If you, let's say if you wanted to get, you know, five, you would have five twin battle guns also with him. So I don't know. I don't. I never really liked that unless the the figures are going to be released multiple times. If he had the Range Viper being released single carded first and then put him with the twin battle gun later on, I would have had no issue with that. Um, so there's that little bit of information. But not, let's not waste any more time. Let me get uh, this stuff out of the way. We're going to open him up and uh, see what he has to offer. Let's do that right now. 
there. There's the card. We don't need the card anymore. We've already read the card. Put that down there. Open up this little clamshell here. And I'm just going to shift this down here like so. So now we're a little bit more level. He does come with a plethora of items here. I'm going to try and do this as quiet as possible because I... Ugh, plastic cracking just drives me up a wall for some reason. I don't know. It's like a pet peeve I have. Alright, we have his ammo. We have a cat. So, what is this? Like a... What's it? What's it I think it starts with a B. Ballas or something like that. I don't, I don't know the technical term. We've seen this before. We'll get to that. Um, this looks like the original. I want to say this is probably just a remold in, in upgraded plastic from the original. The uh, clip for the grenade launcher is also removable. The handle looks as long as the original as well. So I'm, I'm assuming this is just a recast remold of the original grenade launcher here from the Range Viper. He does have a machine gun with a scope on it. We'll get to that in a second. Um, he also comes with his backpack, which has got some paint applications on it, which looks pretty good. And then we have the figure itself, and we have the, as always with G.I. Joe, the much-needed and wanted display stand, which is nice. We get these with all of our modern figures, very nice. Um, he also does come with a pistol in his holster already, which is a nice little added touch. I like that. Thank you very much for giving us an actual pistol that you can remove from the actual holster. Uh, we have seen this body mold. It's pretty much just a straight up repaint from the Rise of Cobra twin battle gun range viper. He even comes with that range viper came with this machine gun right there. Let me get his arms situated here so he doesn't look like a buffoon. Um, you can take this helmet off. Let me get this helmet off here. And underneath, he just has a balaclava head. We're pretty much used to the balaclava heads, which G.I. Joe's at this point. So that's good. The head looks good. And I'm just putting his helmet back on, which is really how I'm going to display him anyway. Uh, so there we go with that. Uh, as far as the the uh, Range Viper's articulation does go, his head can swivel full 360 rotation. He can look up. It feels like he can look further up with the mask because the mask ends up wanting to move on its own, but he can really move up about that far. He can look down a little bit, eh, a little bit past neutral eye level. Um, the arms go up about this far on both sides, and they go down full 360 rotation on both sides. He has a single jointed elbow, which gets a little bit, I want to say about 90 degrees, which is pretty good. A little bit less, maybe. Swivel at the elbow. And then we have a wrist swivel, a wrist hinge, which points down and does point up, which is nice. Um, it goes in and out on the other side, just so there is that differentiation between the two. And then we have a ab crunch, which goes forward and back. And then it can pivot side to side. Mine's a little bit locked up on me. I'm going to have to work with that with some hot water. I don't want to force it too much, but he can swivel also. Um, he's got his uh, T-jointed hips. Legs go out, forward, go back a little bit. They kind of kick out. They don't go naturally back due to the sculpting of the rear end. And then we have a double-jointed knee. And we have a boot swivel and points the toe nicely, points the heel nicely. And that is it for the Range Viper, as far as articulation goes, range of motion, whatnot. So good range of motion, good articulation. Uh, I don't really have any issues with the body mold, to be honest with you. I think he stands nicely, so no issues there with him. Um, as far as the uh, his accessories go, like I showed you before, this is just kind of a gray plastic. There's no paint applications on this, um, actually, this weapon. Let me back up a little bit here and uh, show off this grenade launcher, which is actually probably what I'm going to have him pose with. You can remove the clip, 
So there is that option. The vintage figure also had that option as well with that. And like I said, this is pretty much just a re reused mold from said grenade launcher, um, just in a more durable plastic for an updated figure. And let's see if we can get him having his gun fit in his hand. Um, it doesn't really want to... See, now what I'm going to do is, personally, with mine... Now, when I can't get a, a trigger finger into a trigger hole, I'm probably going to take a little bit of a, an X-Acto knife and kind of get rid of that trigger right there. There's a little bit of a trigger right there. Right there. I'm probably just going to shave that back. This way he can get his hand or his finger in that trigger hole. But for now... He's going to have to make do with him holding it like this, which I just, ugh, it looks horrible like this. Looks god-awful. Uh, doesn't look natural at all. So I might just have him hold it on this side, and then we'll have him kind of, ugh, I hate how this looks. It looks horrible. horrendable is horrendable is that's not even a word. Horrendable is. It's a new word. There we are. So now he's holding it. It doesn't look very natural. It looks kind of wonky. But he can he can uh, kind of two hold it, two hand it. Not really. I don't I don't necessarily understand why they decided to go with these hands for it. These are the uh, same hands that kind of came with Shadow Tracker. But we'll get to that in a second. I'm going to show a little comparison, a couple comparisons. Um, let's go with the. Uh, we have this, which we've seen with Shadow Tracker. So there is that. I don't think I'm going to have him use this. I don't quite know what I'm going to use with this. I might use this for something else. To be honest with you, down the road, um, I like Shadow Tracker to kind of have that as his, like, kind of signature weapon almost so I'm gonna leave that alone for that um, this is also another weapon that came with shadow tracker uh, there isn't really a place to put this on him which kind of bugs the hell out of me um, even on the backpack you think that you know him being a survivalist you would want him to be able to you know pop stuff on you know maybe put a peg hole on the backpack so he can hold it the only really peg hole that you got is the peg hole on his back and I mean, I guess you could use that, but that'll just, I just think that looks stupid. And it kind of doesn't want to stay due to the back of this. It doesn't really fit. Well, yeah, see, this is kind of like a, what was it, uh, like almost hexed shaped. And this is circle, so you're sticking a round hole and, or a round peg into a, a squared hole which does not work so I guess he kind of has to just hold it in his hand let's see if we can get that in his hand and have it held he does hold it in that kind of odd uh, archery hand and he can hold it in his other gripping hand his regular gripping hand which is good that's good uh, but he doesn't have anywhere to store it so that kind of sucks and then we have, finally, get this up a little bit, uh, we have his machine gun here, and it does have an ammo, ammo rounds, which I think this, this uh, machine gun works perfectly for him. Now, this ammo will pop out easily, just so you know. See, I didn't even do anything really there. It just kind of popped out. So, I, you know, you want to use your best friend. You want, if you have a three and three quarter inch figure, you want to use your super glue. Um, his bipod will also kind of pop off if you're not careful. Um, it just kind of clips back on there. But yet again, super glue will save you a lot of hassle. Uh, he can hold it kind of in this hand. And then I guess you could have him hold it. This is not, I'm not going for posing of the century here, but, and this is a horrible way to have him post. <laughs> Let me fix this situation here. This is how you kind of want to have them looking down, like so. Let 
seems to me that the Rise of Cobra version had a little bit better hand articulation. Ugh, I hate this stupid archery hand. Why did they give him this hand? Why would you give him this hand? It makes no sense. <sighs> anyway, he can two-handed if you play around with it. Here's his backpack. That actually does fit on his back. So that's good. Nice little, I guess, a little bit of paint detail there in the, uh, was it? he's got two pocketed grenades right there. So that's interesting enough. Like I said, the uh, pistol is removable and it looks to be like a 9mm Beretta. It does fit in this hand, but he's, yet again, because they chose this hand to use, great job Hasbro, um, he's pointing it in an awkward angle. I don't know, I just don't really care for that. It's like the worst possible hand you give someone that's got to actually hold a weapon. Uh, and then this hand is a just regular gripping hand and it's wobbling all over the place and doesn't want to stay in. So this guy can't really hold his weapons too well. I, I don't really understand what the hell Hasbro was thinking here with this hand. It doesn't grip well. It's He doesn't even come with a bow and arrow, so I don't understand what they were thinking. If you do want to have him hold his staff, I would suggest you use... Uh, actually, I think I remember with, even with Shadow Tracker, he can use this hand. But the hands for Shadow Tracker work because he comes with a bow, an arrow, that staff... Um, all of the things that come with Shadow Tracker, he can actually hold. So it works with him, but it doesn't really work with this guy. Unless you're having him hold this. You know? I just... Ugh. Why this hand? He didn't do that with Rise of Cobra, because here's the Rise of Cobra version. And he's got a regular trigger finger hand, which works. Let me just take it off so you can see. It's like, if you already had released this guy way ahead of time... Why wouldn't you have just given him the same hand? Why would you switch hands? What were you thinking? So, I don't know. You give the commander the, the least usable hand. <laughs> Makes zero sense. But, whatever. There's all of his accessories and, and how they fit with him or lack thereof. Um, I'm probably going to swap these hands out. Or at least this hand right here um, with somebody else that has a regular trigger finger hand. Maybe I'll just give him black gloves instead. I don't know what I'm going to do here. But here is the comparison side by side with the Rise of Cobra version, which I think is the more superior version. And to be honest with you, I would not spend $40 on this guy, even though he does go for less on the, the uh, exclusive action figure market. Um, even though he does go for less, I would still go after the Twin Battle Gun Rise of Cobra version. I think he's got a better paint scheme. I like the black, the green, the gray, the dark charcoal gray. I think that looks better, especially for a guy that's a survivalist. I understand that this is a take on the Deke series, which was, I believe he showed up for uh, episode one of this of series one. Um think that's what it was and then he showed up in a couple others there was that horrible horrible episode with Kath and gridiron they're playing football yes football um anyway uh, i'm not a big fan of the deke series to be honest be a little, be, to be honest with you um if you are all the more power to you but it's just not for me i don't know um I do like the even the paint details on his his uh, rig here, his chest rig, with his gun. Like it looks better. Like there's better paint detail here than here. This is just like like blah plastic. Where the his smoke grenade right here is actually painted silver. The bullets here are painted in a bronze slash goldish looking color. Where here it's just plastic, plastic plasticky very plastic feel to this version even on the shoulder pads here there's a little bit of i want to say almost metallic green paint where this is just kind of a blah 
color. I don't know. There's nothing really to it. Um, he's even got paint detail on his sh on his shins here. A little bit of silver for the buckles right here where he's got nothing. I don't know. I just don't... I, I can't see this as being a big deal even for a commander. So what I might end up doing is I picked up a few of the uh, direct-to-consumer... Um, uh, the older ones from 2006, the direct consumer uh, range vipers, and I kind of I got I want to say th about three of them, and they were going for real cheap. I think around eight bucks on eBay. So I picked up a couple of those, even though they run a little bit smaller. That's okay. Uh, not everyone needs to be the same height, and I might just swap him as being my commander. I think he looks more legit. But uh, as far as he goes, I don't. I'm not a big fan of this. This this hand is really just kind of dumbs down the figure. Um, I don't mind that he's a little louder as far as the color goes. You know, I get it. it it's supposed to be his OG look, but even that OG look was more blue than purple. Um, it is cool that we did get a I don't know a repaint of this guy, but you can't really army build him because he's a exclusive going for around thirty to forty dollars. So. There's that. And then if you try to get this guy, he's going to be around 40 bucks, especially mint on card. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I haven't really seen too many of him loose, to be honest with you. So there's that, in not in your favor either. Um, I don't know. I guess if you you have a – I guess your, your main major option would be – get one of him and then just get like I do what I did and get the the uh, DTC range vipers which go for uh, much less and uh, you can go that route so that might help your your pocketbook a little bit more uh, like I said granted the DTC figures run a little bit shorter but eh, I don't think it's really that big of a deal at the end of the day they can still get the job done and look like an army for you and then you have your commander as well and you saved a lot of money you probably spend get a couple range vipers from the DTC line you probably spend around 24 and then he's probably around 30 to 40 I want to say if he's loose maybe 20 I mean you're still spending around maybe five bucks more than you would spend on this just this figure and you have a little squad that you can go with but it's just one of those unfortunate things that Hasbro didn't think of to give us as uh, army builders we never got them, and when we finally did, it was almost too little too late. So, um, let's get him out of here now. We can go take a nap. Good, sir. Let's get him on his display base with all of his accessories. Hopefully, I can get his gun in his hand here. Or actually, what I want to what I want to pose him with is this. So let's try and do that. Might just, I th really feel like, especially this gun, if you just like do what I said earlier and just shave that back a little bit, you'll be able to get him to get his finger in there. And then it doesn't look as bad, you know, because now it's just kind of pushing the index finger out. Let's see if I can push that back right now a little bit. I do have my trusty knife here. Okay, that's working. I'm working it. There we go. Get that thing out of the way. Just kind of push it back. You can almost just use some tweezers if you have these kind of uh, pointed tweezers. You can just kind of push that trigger backward. And that opens up the hole. A lot better than what it was see how much more room there is now then let's try that now and see if we can get that in there and what did you know 
Now he's holding it much better. I'll have to I'll have to to perfect it, but see it still wants to pop out because what happens is this other finger that's sticking out wants to get in the way. Another remedy you could do is you could take a little bit of an exacto knife to this hand and just kind of um, how these fingers are molded, you can kind of cut in between the fingers and then you'll have a, a trigger finger for this guy. So that might work out in your favor as well. But as far as I'm concerned, this guy's hand really is just ruining, ruining the damn figure for me. It just, ugh. It's not doing what I want it to do. And it should just naturally just get his hand in there. Come on. Being a real ass. Look at that. It's frustrating. Anyway, let's get him out here. We've got all of his accessories here. There we go. So, while he's a, a cool character, a unique character, a lot of question marks behind this character... I'm going to go ahead and say pass on him. Uh, I, I don't think he's worth the money. I don't think he's really worth the attention, to be honest with you. Like I said, I dig the character. I dig the story of the character. I, I dig the, the mythos behind the character. But why don't you just go ahead and get yourself this guy? Even if you're paying 40 bucks, at least you're getting the figure and the twin battle gun for him. I, I would say, you know, 40 is is quite a bit, but... You know, Rise of Cobra stuff is starting to go up in price because it's not coming back. Uh, we're not getting G.I. Joe for at least another year and a half as to the date of this video. And, um, you know, and that's quite a shame, you know, that, you know, figure prices for G.I. Joes keep going up and up and up and up. Hopefully it'll drop off soon. Uh, but I don't really see the, the, the big deal behind this character. Get the Rise of Cobra one. You, you get more for your money. Um, this one total pass and uh yeah not really feeling it too much so there is that bit of a deal uh anyway uh yeah that's pretty much it for the review uh, i hope you guys enjoyed this review this is my final review for cobra month it's not uh um the the way i wanted the review to go i was actually pretty excited to get this figure out and play around with it and i'm just kind of like meh meh you know left with that meh taste in my mouth you know but anyway i did still have fun uh shooting this review hanging out with you guys thanks for hanging out with me be sure to hit that thumbs up that always helps me if you want to hit the thumbs down too that's cool let me know what i can do to improve my content that always helps my channel and help helps me um give you better content down the road um be sure to subscribe if you haven't hit the bell for notifications that, that helps both of us and uh yeah that's pretty much it for me and I'll see you guys on the flip side.